Hello and welcome back to the UK LC as we'll be rounding the day out with Fnatic Rising taking on Envision. I am Hipray and he's Orcs. How are we feeling about this one? Because we've got two ex Fnatic Rising members going up against their former team here. Yeah, I think there's a lot on the line in terms of storyline, but I think here it's sort of two rosters that haven't quite hit the mark. Fnatic, great early run, and then obliterated by uh, XL. I think yeah. there's no other way of saying it. And Envision, rough start, definitely starting to bring things together. And this game could really be the test for them, because I think Fnatic have brought a lot more scaling to the table than most teams have been willing to do so, particularly their game against XL. Sometimes has backfired, sometimes worked extremely well. Envision, on the other hand, sort of have mixed priorities, a lot of early pressure in the mid-jungle, scaling bot lane, weak side top laner. So we'll sort of see how this matches up against Fnatic, because I don't feel like Envision have had as fast a pace as XL have in the early game, so that might be a concern. I think this is very much going to see, has Fnatic changed the ideology uh, around the scaling? Because I still think it's fine, just more priority in the lanes. If you're going to yeah. you're gonna pick like a Vladimir mid lane, you, you got to expect that you're going to get invaded, and it just set the pace for the game pretty heavily uh, in the negative. So I think there's a lot of interesting things come down here, and I think draft is going to dictate exactly what direction these teams go in. My concern is that... XL essentially played a perfect game, it felt like, almost, uh, up against Fnatic. If Envision make a single mistake, it might just be done. And we have seen that they are very vulnerable to making mistakes. We saw Houston Prosper get killed in a 2v2 by Jack Spectra. We've seen Nolte have some oopsie-daisies come out. Shikari and Adept have mostly been consistent, and Adept's had some pretty pop-off games. But now he's up against Magi Felix, which is a pretty big challenge for the most part. So we'll open up the draft. See how things go. Obviously, we're on 10.3 now, so moved on for the 10.2 patch. I feel like that does favor Dan. Often does go for pretty heavy farming. And the buffs to Soroki, uh, Sejuani's uh, yeah. jungle camps, clear. Also, we could go Favorable. back to what we saw Dan used to play back in the spring split, the Carthus jungle as well. True. Something that also benefits from, you know, it's fast clear and these camps, you know, these bigger camps being worth to actually clear them fully out. So maybe we'll see something like that. A bit like the Shivana in the last game, strong clearing means that you do just get a massive advantage. Dan could maybe look to do that, but the bands are rattling out here. We have the Orn, the Fresh, the Syndra, and the Cassiopeia for Night at Rising on their final ban now. Tristana going to be denied away from Adept. Something that has consistent, strong lane pressure. Shoves very easily. And also, if Magic Flix is picking, scaling will struggle. And Soraka Ban comes out from Envision. No surprise there. Glad to see that one gone. Now, Fnatic oh Rising God. did prioritize a set first pick, but he is nerfed in this patch. It'll be interesting to see if they follow that line of thinking. Aphelios is left open. And that is pretty up there in terms of tearing. Oh, come on. <laughs> I just, I was like, we got, we got. Nah, he's just hovering. He's just playing with your heart for now. For now. Yep, and th that's the Fnatic special. First pick in the Sejuani, which... It doesn't show your cards. I think that is a big aspect to it. Yes. Um, to a degree, because Dan will play this no matter what and clearly confident in its strength. But definitely, we saw him get put on the back foot in the jungle matchup, and it's a quick lock-in off this set Ezreal. Ezreal obviously risen in priority with the buffs to its attack speed, its scale and attack speed, but also lethal tempo, uh, picked up by Viper in the LCK, his new tech that's worked pretty effectively. Set being prioritized by Shikari here. Obviously, having the Sejuani, you can ult into a team. Great against that. But this is the standard for Fnatic Rising, the Leona Sejuani combo. The only time they haven't had it was when the Leona was banned away up against XL. And it's huge CC lockdown coming out uh, on any targets in skirmishes. And then Pride going to go for the Aatrox in the top lane. So already, this is a very strong team fight and a huge front line. Ooh. And yeah, this is no surprise at all. As soon as I saw that early Ezreal pick, you don't really want to pick Yumi when Ezreal's already been taken, but it was very obvious in Vision when you could take the Yumi themselves. This is a super strong bot lane, extremely hard to punish, but it is yep. diveable. It is diveable. Now, as we move into ban phase two, what are Envision looking to do to round this compound? They're looking for a jungler and looking for a mid laner. What do you think is going to be key here for them? Because at the moment, I'm seeing kind of very little engage. You can obviously use that final chapter on someone like Sakari, but flanks then you're not the, using it. Yeah, flanks from the set are big. It's, the question is going to be what Adept is going to play. Uh, and what Nolte is, obviously. But I think Nolte usually typically going for an early pressure jungler. Lee Sin's open, Lisa's open, Olaf's open, Jarvan's open. So there's a lot of options in that regard. Fnatic could start to whittle them down, or they could look towards the mid lane. Now, Adept, he has options like the LeBlanc he has, which has been banned now. He has options like the Aurelia, which we saw him on. But I feel like Aurelia would struggle up against all that CC from Fnatic Rising. Uh, so a lot of... A lot of different options. I feel like Jungle is going to be the first pick coming out from Envision, and then they're going to be able to get counter pick for Adept. Question is, they banned away for the Aphelios from Xmati. 
The Misfortune could be an option here. A lot of shoving pressure and great synergy with the um, with the Leona. So it wouldn't surprise me to see that one off the table. Or do they look towards mid lane and actually going to ban that Sona out? Potentially worried about Magi Felix playing an Aatrox mid, which he has shown he was very willing to do last year. But yeah. that's an interesting one. I feel like the pressure for Sona coming through was pretty low. And I feel like the Misfortune is is the one I would expect from Maddie. They're going to ban away the Olaf from Nolte, which is obviously a good matchup in a Sejuani. Can match it clear and also ignore all that CC. So the question is, what does Nolte want in this situation? Or are they going to blind a mid for a depth? We used to see a little bit of Skarna as well into the Sejuani as a potential pick. Sundle so. was also another one. Actually yep. coming out with a Kane. Ooh. So this is an interesting one. Obviously benefits from uh, more jungle pressure in the current situation. Kane Yumi is pretty hard to deal with. And obviously into a ton of frontline, beefy frontline and tanks, the, the Rast form is extremely potent at just shredding them and also healing up. Fnatic are hovering with the, the Vygot, and this could go mid or bot lane because yes. Maddie has shown he's willing to play it. That would add even more CC. It looks like for now, Maddie going to go... The Kaiser. Yeah, okay. for the Kaiser. I actually really would like to see potentially that uh, Vagar because it does just shut down. Like, Shikari doesn't really have a gap closer other than pressing Q and just running at you. It's you just land though. You make a wall that you can't walk through. Yeah, it is a weak blind. That is obviously but, the... I mean, uh, to be honest with Magi Felix, I feel like he's willing to blind whatever and just deal with the consequences. He's confident in that lane matchup. Um, the Kaiser, good synergy with all the CC coming out. Can obviously ult in the follow and benefit from that passive rise. I like it. Adds another dimension to your team comp. You have huge backline threats. You have a really strong frontline. This isn't a super scaling comp from Fnatic Rising, but it does deliver in the late game. And I feel like this is the more well-rounded sort of composition I'd like to see them turn to compared to their super scaling up against Excel. So looking pretty structured, looking pretty solid. Envision, though, they need to pick a mid laner up against Rise. Cassiopeia is banned away, so that Zizz isn't an open. option. And Zoe's the standard blind in this, so... This composition for Envision is super heavily based around poke. If they can find the right sort of uh, damage laid down to the right targets on the side of Fnatic Rising, they can set up for any objective. The concern is though, the engage from Fnatic Rising is formidable, and if they get on top of the right targets, they will start a fight and they will win. Yes. Um, so a harder to execute composition for Envision. Fnatic definitely favored in ease of execution, um, but there's a lot of strengths still in Vision's composition. Like, Ezreal Yumi can be devastating. Uh, Zoe can be devastating. The real interesting one, though, is this this uh, Kane. Because normally we see up against Dan early pressure junglers picked to try and beat him out where Sejuani isn't as strong. But this is actually matching the scaling and saying, look, I'm going to farm up. I'm going to get my Rast form available. I'm going to be really hard for any of your tanks to deal with on the front line. But there will come a point where Magi Felix next Maddie will be able to shred through him. Definitely a heavy mid-game spike in comp for the side of uh, Envision. Their poke and their power there is going to be really difficult to deal with. But my concern is just if it comes down to team fights, that's where it can be a little bit difficult. It's all about structured setup, vision control, deny it from them, and just layer down the poke. If the enemy pushes into an area, you give it up but you keep layering poke down until you feel comfortable to engage. And that engage can come from Set, it can come from Kane, it can come from Yumi, but ultimately they should be low enough HP that it's not a fight, it's a cleanup. That's gonna be what we need to see here. Right, teams are loading into the game. We're actually seeing uh, Adap, he was running the TP, switched out to the cleanse, obviously respecting the amount of CC that Fnatic brings. I like that top. choice. I think that was definitely a smart choice from him. Yusa also with the fact he's got a Yumi means he doesn't have to opt into taking a uh, heal, so he has cleanse as well. So two of these kind of damage dealers, two of your, your two Pokey members for Envision, are going to be relative safety with the fact that they've got these cleanses available. But we're taking to Summoner's Rift for our fourth game of the day. Fnatic Rising were handed their first defeat by BTXL last week. And Vision were the team everybody pegs this season as the Academy team killers. Can they do it here versus Fnatic Rising? They had a tough start to the season. Pulled it back last week. A win over Fnatic is a good omen for them. Absolutely is. This is the start. This is the potential time when Fnatic have hit their first loss against XL. Vision have the potential to take them down again. 
Don't want a two losing streak, but definitely not an easy task. We see the Dan Bravado synergy. That is a big thing to watch here. They have the Sedroni Leone again. We saw them essentially holding hands, walking around the map. If they find anyone, the CC is laid extremely well. You can auto attack reset with the Leona to easily stack up the passive of the Sejuani and just double layer the stuns. Really difficult, especially if they find Nulti early before he's hit that Rast form. He's pretty vulnerable, he's pretty weak, he's pretty useless to be honest. Uh, and there's definitely a chance to punish on that. I feel like pre-level six, this game might be a little bit slow, just because Dan tends to favor farming up in the levels and Nulti, not a ton you can do on a cane until you have your form. He might look for some potential gank angles as the thing can go through the walls, but the setup isn't really there in many lanes. If you land a sleepy trouble bubble mid lane, sure, but it's a short lane and it's risky. If you go top lane, potentially there's setup, so that is an avenue you could explore, but I'm just waiting to see how things play out. Leona and the uh, Kai's actually makes for quite an interesting lane because obviously you can get those stacks up for X Maddie to really put that burst down as jumps onto Yusa here just to get himself a light amount of stack for Bravado. You get fired back onto, and that is the power of the Yumi and the Ezreal. You just take a lot of poke. Yeah, your level one isn't that good as Leona. Obviously, you can E but can't Q as a follow up. And you just end up taking quite a bit of damage as a result. And obviously, the Yumi and the Ezreal can sustain up pretty easily in that regard. So not too much achieved, but just threatening. They do hit the level two first. That's the one issue with this lane is you don't have much shoving power. And you do see Nulti looking towards top lane. He wants those Rast stacks and also there's potential for the King. Kill, Pride is overstepping. Well, King indeed, as they're looking to come in on two. Pride have that knockup available. Pride does get himself a pretty big ultimate off. Uh, sorry, Q off. Nulti flashes forward, tries to find himself first it. blood and he gets it. Cleanly played there by Envision in the top side. Oh, do you see the Sejuani coming in though? He has been spotted in a TP now. Nulti, you need to get out. Yeah, Nulti's looking to make his grand escape. Remember, he doesn't have that flash. Does have himself the E available to try and get through the walls as he needs to go for a bit of a wall swim. But Pride finds himself one in return and one more stack means Shikari. He gets locked down, rooted down, has a haymaker for the shield if he needs it. Has to flash. And it's answered back by Fnatic. Good read by Dan to come back up there. Yeah, path all the way up. TP comes in. Short death time is this early in the game. And Nulti gets punished. E on an extremely long cooldown early in the game without any CDR or points in it. And also, it's usually the, the shadow form that gets uh, the reduced cooldown base. It's, it's so long. Uh, it was a good setup for that first gank, but just a little bit of an overstay. Nulti didn't respect the fact that a counter could come in, so he recalled in that brush. And no, uh, Shikari has to burn the flash to try and mitigate it. So good read from Dan overall to match that one. And the kill actually goes in the pocket of Pride. He's up in levels. Got that kill in his pocket. And up in farm now, so a bit rough for Shikari here. Looks like an invade's coming through as well here into Nulti's jungle. He did get his blue buff, but now Dan looks to jump onto him. Loads of CC is just going to be layered down. And X Maddie snipes him with the Void Seeker. Fnatic just catching Nulti out. This is what we expected. Bravado and Dan holding hands, walking together, and easily able to find out Nulti. Kane's so vulnerable in the early levels. I'm a little bit concerned about this pick, especially when Bravado and Dan have got their champions. They've been playing so consistently in the UKLC. This is where Dan does best, when he's able to apply pressure into the enemy jungle. We didn't see that against XL. He was the one pressured out. But here, he basically can do what he wants. Yeah, Nulti. Getting caught out time and time again, but now looking to see if he can get it. Some camps for himself. He's two levels behind Dan currently. Ooh, not just very, very rough. It has just hit uh, level four off it's, this camp. It's a fact as well that X Maddie sniped it with a Void Seeker, so he got the kill uh, rather than either the tanks. Really, Fnatic looking good so far. The Goldie's only 400. Definitely a good start in this situation. All right, got the lane pushing into him. And a big thing is you can see that Dan's on the top side of the map. So this is not a good spot for Shikari's wave to be. He wants to shove it in as fast as possible before Dan comes up. They expect that Dan is on the top side though, so this gives a window for Nulti to go for these Raptors and steal something back. Shikari does get the wave to crash in. Nulti gets the Raptors, so things are going off pretty nice there in that situation from Vision. Uh, it doesn't look like much, but it's something. Nulti thinking about stealing the Krogs, but doesn't go for But he's going to start up this Infernal Drake here instead. Should have it fairly easily here. They can always roam over Yusa and Prosper, who've got lane priority. So, yep, this should be a nice and easy Infernal Drake picked up here for Envision. So they answer out 
Shikari does a good job to hold himself on the very side though. of the map, but they are looking for available. Here. They have that Realm Wolf available. Nolte going to steal this, and, well, secure this, make sure he gets it. We'll give up his life for it, though. Actually, he has to go for a bit of a wall swim, gets followed up by Dan, and that should be a nice and easy kill in return by Fnatic Rising. Lose Dragon, but they get the jungler once again. Adept does land a bubble here. It's a bit of poke up to Magic Felix. But... Yeah, really not much when you look at the items from Adept. First item, Merc Treads. That is not a high damage build coming out for the Zoe. And the damage from that Paddle Star combo was reflected there. Ultimately, Nolte gets the Dragon, but pays for it with his life. And now Dan, already level 6 and Nolte level 4. This is not a good start for the Jungle Cane coming out here. And this was clearly something they, they, had, they specifically planned for Dan. You know he's going to prioritize that Sejuani. He's played it every single game so far. So they came into this with the strategy of playing the cane into it. And so far, this is a payoff. One and three, a level down, not a great start. Yeah, he's having a very, very rough go of it. Getting his red buff. That is his chickens as well, so hopefully he gets his humble trespass soon. Curious to see how close he is to upgrading to Darken, because Kane's kind of garbage until he upgrades one but of the ways, really. He has been fighting with a lot of melee champions. Um, yeah, he should be on a decent... You know when he was getting beaten up by Bravado and Dan? That's technically fighting, isn't it? Do you mean dying? Yeah, well, you know, it counts. Is there a way to check, or is it a bit like, like Karzix, where you can't actually see? No, I don't think we can see. Uh, let's just assume, you know, he's, he's somewhat away <laughs> from achieving... <laughs> The Rast form, which will definitely be the one he goes for this game. I'd be shocked to see him go for the Shadow Assassin. Um, but then again, I've seen crazier things, so... You can see that um, Envisioner actually kept their AD carry and support bot side of the map. x has been flipped over to the top side because they know that Rift Herald's spawning soon, and this could just be a great momentum boost here for Envision. They're trying to get some plates in response on this bot side, but at the moment, the Ezreal isn't really doing too much damage to these towers. It's so doing a lot of damage to Pride, though. True. So the two things that suggest to me is, one, Nolte going for that Dragon and dying for it, and also them not matching on the top side of the map, is that Envision want to trade. And essentially, they just want to keep away from Fnatic right now and wait until their mid-game spikes and they become strong then. Uh, that's why Nolte went for the Dragon, to de delay the potential soul, uh, even though it cost him his life. And that's why they're keeping the bot lane here, because they want to try and get damage on these plates and threaten that rather than trying to match Fnatic, where clearly so far they've been struggling. They need Rast for Nolte. They need Yusa to have two items. They need Prosper to have, you know, his Athenes. That's when they'll be in a good spot. But nice wave click coming out from Shikari. That buys a lot of time here and delays the Herald coming down, but likely they'll be able to find this tower. Oh, Dan's looking to jump onto Shikari. Dan's on that flank. Shikari, this is, this risky. is very greedy by this. him. He has no teleport, does have that flash, and he knows Dan's coming in. Dan has ultimate. You watch for the showstopper. They might not even give him the opportunity. Gets himself a big, big ulti out. Tries to turn it around, and Bravado shuts him down. They've got Herald to work with. Make sure they get these plates nice and early, and this will just be first turret blood gifted over to Fnatic Rising. Yeah, not sure what the game plan was there. Uh, you should, I mean, you just know Dan is on the top side and looking for this. It, it hands over a free opportunity and it buys time, but you really get nothing from it. Because Maddie, they're going to leave alone to solve this one out. I don't know if he'll have timed out. It does, so he gets a full 570 gold. Yeah, um, questionable play coming out from Envision is all I'm going to say. Suboptimal. Suboptimal is a great way to describe it. It's a positive way to uh, describe 1400 it. 1,400 gold is the difference between x and you, sir. Uh, that's pretty significant. And obviously, you know, we talk a lot about how Ezreal has cheaper item spikes than a lot of other champions. You know, you go to the Mirror Mana, which is very cheap. Uh, Triforce is a bit more expensive, but then that two item, you're in a great spot. Compared to a lot of AD carries going, you know, Essence Reaver and Infinity Edge, like Aphelios. Uh, Aphelios does or Misfortune. This is not the case for Kaiser. Kaiser follows you with that Man Immune as the first item. Um, so she's going to be matching those spikes, but she's 1300, well, 1200 now, gold ahead. So she's going to be getting it even faster. It's a really rough slot to be in. And Envision have now swapped their bot lane up to top side. So they, they are, are still... really looking to play away from Fnatic. Uh, yeah, they still are, but this is going to give over this dragon. There's no way they contest this. They're already 3400 down. Things are looking pretty rough at the moment. Yeah, you set. Headed over to try and catch this wave. True Shot Barrage to clear it out. Bright's doing a pretty good job being able to deal with this as well. He's actually up over Shikari. Both of these top laners are taking the brunt of the weak side here, uh, not playing versus each other. 
And Prospero getting jumped onto. We'll take a fair amount of damage, but Yusa will get at least a plate. Yeah, they got a plate. Yeah, nice. Uh, they got a plate bot lane as well. And yeah. X Maddy did get all first arrow blood. Is bot tower. And flash by Shikari, but you can't flash all the CC. X Maddy slides in with a killer instinct. Throws out the showstopper for the moment. Has that haymaker, does throw it back in returns. Trying to get the life, uh, the steal away. Not gonna be able to find much here. And Nolte just gets a couple of stacks. Yeah, King's just so useless at the moment. Like, you really come in, it's like you see the W come down. It's like, oh, no knock up, no damage. Nice. At it? Uh, Depp's looking for magic. Ooh, magic, magic flashes, flashes away. And they do actually manage to clear the wave out. So because of that deep dive, they get Shikari, but they don't get the tower. It actually works out okay, Fen Vision, but they're still massively down in gold. Um, like, this is relatively okay. This is like... That was like a, a, a kind of... This is like the, the kitchen's on fire, but the house is still standing. Okay. <laughs> it's not great. And oh, this could be it. The bubble goes for his damage, but remember, no, oh, yeah. hasn't really got much because he built those magic treads early. <laughs> yeah. I'm watching I'm, I'm having flashbacks to when you get one hit by Zoe, and I'm like, this is... Oh, never mind. Zero damage. Yeah, when I get one hit by Zoe, they're not using magic treads. Yeah, well, he's obviously going to defensive build, expecting some pressure mid, but really been untouched. And he's actually finding a lot of success against Magi Felix on this rise, applying the pressure onto him. Uh, so it's nice to see from Adept, he's holding up in this matchup. And that was always what, it's always one of the concerns going up against the academy teams. It's that Magi Felix and Special were just on another level for such a long time, but Adept doing pretty solid. It's the rest of the team yeah. that's pulling apart. One thing I actually want to note here is we've been talking about how, you know, the Airdrill has cheap item spikes. So does Kaiser. You also build Murray Mana on Kaiser now. I did just talk about that. Yeah, cool. Job. Well, you were the one making the wrong point earlier, so... What wrong point? You weren't making a wrong point. You were just saying that Ezreal has cheap item spikes, and we... we... I was saying how typically yes. other AD carries have more expensive spikes. Like, you have Misfortune, Aphelios, so you've got Essence, you've got Infinity Edge. Yeah. But Kaiser matches you on it. And when you're up in gold as well, it just means that you're just flat out losing. <laughs> There's no other just way to put like it about. Me making bad points, so I'm just not listening to you. <laughs> yeah, essentially. And now Matty gonna get another 420 gold uh, in his pocket. Or oh, they could find something here. The yeah, slow. He gets the slow down from the Hextech hose pipe. But remember, to phase you are adepts. You have flash though and cleanse. Yusa uses the final chapter. That's gonna be the flash away. And now they're looking to find something onto Yusa. Arcane shifts away. Ulti comes down and adept is slowed. Pride looking for the infernal chains. Will find them. Tries to portal jump away, but you can just ping back in. A nice and easy kill there picked up for Fnatic, and they are just running away with hey, the game. Hey, Nolte got some stacks there, you know. <laughs> Why is it whenever I cast Nolte, this is what I see? Him dying a lot. Um, oh, Shikari? Comes out. Shikari comes in, throws out the Showstopper to Shop Barrage. Literally does no damage. Shikari throws out a Haymaker. He does a fair amount here. Now Yusa, look at to turn it around. All of a sudden, Envision trying to do something. But again, Nolte just does nothing. <laughs> he just has to run away. And Prosper is sacrificed for his jungler. Who actually, uh, would have been, what would have been the smarter decision was that Nolte die. Because Nolte is actually worth less yeah, than they, Prosper they, right they were now. like, oh, we can do it. They're low. No, they're not. The, mm, Magic Felix is here. Mm, and Matty gets a tower in the bot lane as well. He's now got a tier two. This game just isn't going well for Envision at all, in the slightest. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say on the subject. Not good. No bueno. No bueno indeed. What do Envision do? Do they? Do, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> that's, that's, that's literally what I'm trying to work out. Oh, I mean, like it's like, yeah, their mid game is going to be really great. They're just not going to get there. That's I mean, they go down. It's like, Nolte is literally a cannon minion by, walking around. By the time at the Envision moment. gets to the mid game, Fnatic are going to be in the late game. <laughs> They're seven thousand gold up. I like, can we quickly toggle the gold? Because I'm curious to see how far X Maddie's ahead of Yusa here. X Maddie's been given so many tower plates, so many towers. Uh, Adam's looking for something on to Pride. We'll get a fair amount off there. Oh, Nolte's Nolte. got Rast. He has Rast finally, and he has Prosper in his pocket. Pride has he used the World up. Ender. He's trying to find himself the knock up, but look at the healing Pride's going to be able to do. Finally, sure they get the shutdown. Shikari, I mean, not Shikari, Nolte is useful finally. He actually does something. He has a knock up. I mean, Great. it took three of them to be fair. Yep. Pride is... That's still 7k gold down. Yeah. Pride is pretty strong. Hey, it's a start. If we have a little look at the gold okay. as well, hopefully we can see... There we go. See, so, AD carry, 
2,700 gold up for you yeah. for Matty over so Yusa. The house is still on fire, but uh, your neighbors crashed into the living room. No, but you, the rest of the house you, is still standing. You got standing. a bucket of water and you threw it over it, okay? And it's, it hissed a bit, but <laughs> the house is still very much The question fire. is, did they just launch petrol into the fire or water? I think they did that at the start of the game. <laughs> <laughs> It, well, like in the first five, ten minutes, um, they definitely got petrol and water mixed up. But you know, Nolte's not useless anymore, okay? He's actually a champion. Oh, I, I really, really wanted to argue against that. Yes, he has Wrath, but he is so far behind Dan. He has a knock-up. He's two levels. That's Who right. does Dan? He still does no damage, but he has a knock-up, so he's not completely useless. <laughs> right. That's the point but I'm But then we look at his counterpart, he has a stun, a knock-up. He also has his Permafrost, which he can also be has knight by vow. people. Um, he has a Knight's Vow. He's also just tanky. <laughs> Nolte, buddy. I mean, it, Why is it every time I cast Nolte? He picks something really interesting and then just hard well, Conceptually, it. I like this into the Sejuani. Yeah, absolutely. Executionally, I'm not particularly impressed. Yeah, also, it's just like the Leona Sejuani. Is that Nolte? <laughs> that is Nolte. So, Leona Sejuani oh, really punishing into the, the cane, especially when you pick a bot lane with no priority. I think that's that's one of my concerns, is um, Ezo Yumi's great, but you're never going to shove in that lane and as a result, Bravado was free to walk into his jungle and just kill him. Um, yeah. They got the Rift out there. They actually might save this! Yes, they did. That uh, doesn't take any damage. That's pretty good for Fnatic. They you might be able what? to get another tower you here. You know what? They could probably just, probably just end the game. No, <laughs> I am exaggerating. They can't quite end the game here, but they can definitely get two towers mid. Um, and now they'll head over to Dragon. Pick that one up. Yep. It's a nice one as well. Get that Dragon side the Ocean Soul. Magic Felix obviously going to get a lot of sustain here. Oh, and if she's no. the portal jump from Bravado, is looking for him. Nolte lands a pretty crucial knock up there. And that's the flash back out instantly. Final chapter gets used. They use the Glacial Prison, and Pride is just standing in the middle of everyone. Umbral Trespass is going to get used as Pride gets put to sleep. A massive Haymaker comes out by Shikari. The health bars are low on both sides, and everybody gets sent back, and nobody dies. Shikari did so much work with that Haymaker, and Nolte. Crucially, he, got a he was able to actually get that knock-up and he survived for a long time. He's still fairly healthy at the moment and he's got uh, the help of Prosper on him. So suddenly Nolte might just be a threat. I mean, it's a dirty combo, the Yumi, uh, the Yumi Kane. They might actually force them off with the poke. They're low HP and they have poke. If they keep putting damage down on them... Dan has a level advantage. Oh, Maddie has and Maddie the They're oh, looking no. to come in. Let's see the Greek big fight here. Nolte's trying to jump in already, but he is low. Looking to go down, but they haven't quite got it yet. The Dragon's reset. Adep jumps in. Adep jumps out. The Dragon gets picked up, and Shikari will fall down already as Pride picks him up. Yus is trying to land some kind of poke damage out, and Adep is running away. Nolte will die to the Wolves as Magic Felix is the one to secure the kill. They're able to put one to sleep here from Adep, but the Void Seeker onto him by X Maddie. Not enough to find the kill, but Fnatic now looking to push up this mid lane. I think Envision are getting a little bit too hyped. They're like, this is great, this is good, we're gonna win this. And then they realized, oh no, wait, they're 9k gold ahead. Never mind. Uh, Adept, he's buying time. Yeah. Goodbye, buddy. Down he goes. It's not a pool party anymore. You got a point to make here, Obis? No. No. You know it's going bad when Orcs is stunned for words. He has nothing to contribute. I mean, he, he, at this point, there's got to be something Envision can do. There's got to be something they can find. Maybe like an, a Baron Steel or an yeah, Elder like, Steel. Uh, you know, if they steal every objective for the next 20 minutes, <laughs> sure. Uh, I mean, Nolte is going to get stronger. Well, I mean, I guess the phrase is less weak. <laughs> Uh, as he gets a bit bulkier and gets a Black Cleaver, so he actually does some damage, and then he has a Yumi on top of him, but... Oh, uh, okay, no, I, you ignore everything I said. Look at the items, look at what XMI just picked up. I really don't want to call it doomed. Look, I but mean, he's got PD, Magi he's Felix. got Quincy's, the Mura Mana's finished up, Yusa hasn't even stacked his Mana Mune, so he's still yeah. sitting on a stacking item there. X Maddy, three levels up over Yusa as well, got two points in the Killer Instinct. His Q's upgraded, his E's upgraded. 
He can assassinate people at this point on the Kaiser. He's very, very strong. And Dan looking for something on to you. So we'll force him to flash away and take that Blast Cone away. Baron's up. And just honestly, like Fnatic can do it. Magi Felix has got the Archangel, so he's going to stack very fast and likely have that Seraph soon because he bought the TX. He has got it now, stacked up. He's got eight stacks on the Lord of Ages. Three items on Matty, including a PD, so he's like unkillable. Dan's invincible. It just feels really doomed. You has a knock up, though. you got to keep your eyes on that. You mean Nulti? Nulti. Nulti has a knock up. End point. <laughs> it's literally the end of the point. <laughs> He's with the with the Yumi. He'll be annoying. I wouldn't say threatening, but annoying. Yeah, like I feel like if they get oh, that's Ooh. actually something that could be something from Adept. He's looking at Jun. No, he's not. Oh, he's not he even willing it. to risk he that. Balls it. He doesn't have the vision. Also, X Manny has the PD. Like I don't think Adept yeah. can do that. He's only got the Ludens and the Blast Cone, and now Fnatic. We'll get oh, spotted out. Dan is just soloing this objective. He doesn't even care. Magic Felix trying to see if he can find something, oh. something here. Bravado actually misses out on the Solar Flare. No two of a big knockup. That's a win in my books. You know, they, they force the Solar Flare. Oh, they could look for Bravado. Good bubble, good bubble. Adept, gonna get some... Don't yeah. land that Paddle yeah, Star. didn't hit. It's progress, you know, the landing stuff, CC. <laughs> Not so much the damage, but it's a start. Where do we go from here? Well, to the Nexus at some point. I mean, pro comps from the behind are really hard to play. Yeah, they are. As in, they just suck. Um, their team fight is just flat out worse. Uh, they have to like somehow get actual poke onto this backline of Magic Felix next Matty. Good realm war. And back, even then, it's just so difficult. Yeah, I mean, they're just realm war. They're just doing the Baron. They don't have any blue trinkets left. I called it good because I thought the Rit, the Scuttle Scrab was still up. It's not actually still up, so it's actually not like. I mean, insanely it's impactful, like, but they, they want to phase check. They want to come over and check it. It is kind of slow because there's only two doing it. But they've run out of blue trinkets. They're slowly moving up. Bravado and X Maddy doing they're their job just to contest. keep them zoned away. X Maddy's yeah. going to move forward. A uh, little bit of help from Yusa as well, as that's going to be Baron Nasha picked up with 23 minutes on the clock. And Fnatic probably looking for the resets and potentially hey, just in for the siege. Hey, at least they got that dragon early. So it's not Soul on this next one. Yeah. Silver linings. I mean, Still it would lining. only be soul point as well. It wouldn't even be soul. No, if they had that infernal, it'd be three, and then this would be four. Yes, yes. Math. Wow. Yeah. So, Envision denied soul from Fnatic Rising, um, and it only cost them everything. <laughs> Yusa is on the other side of the map. Bubble does land, but it's a very, very I like, tanky I like how Dan walks towards a death. Like, come on, try yeah. it. <laughs> I mean, it does less damage because it doesn't travel as far as well. True, but... I'm like, I'm preparing <laughs> the, the sort of mindset that I'm a Sejuani. Try me. See what happens. Oh. Uh, yeah, that. Mm. Missed that one? I'm not sure what happened. Was I'm that... assuming he killed him. Well, yeah. Uh, the right out of health is, is a term I like to use. <laughs> but I'm not sure if Yusa went for a play or if that was just Magic Felix finding him and killing him. Um, oh, there's a knock up. We, we like those. That's Paddle Star as well. And Ooh, a bubble. He's half HP. This could be. A... I don't think no, it could be. It. Shikari took a lot of damage. She does have that Haymaker. Paddle Star was a little bit too long on cooldown. I was hoping to be a kill, um, but it wasn't. All right. Well, Fnatic actually now using this Baron to solid effect here. They're inside the base onto the Nexus. It's been so, so one sided. And in comes X Maddy. Shikari gets a massive Haymaker off. That's a big knock up. In goes X Maddy, though. He's going to turn golden for the moment, trying to peel away, trying to buy some time. Fnatic are just running through Envision. Nulti's onto the back line, gets himself a two man knock up, and gets himself instantly shut down. 15 to 2, 24 minutes on the clock. Envision are just scrambling for answers, any opportunity to just hold on for a little bit longer. But it looks like they are out of time. They are out of luck. Adept goes down. Prosper almost soon to follow. The Nexus explodes. And in 25 minutes, the Academy Team Slayers are slain. And that just seemed like Fnatic were a little bit angry after what happened against XL because they delivered a similar performance against Envision. Uh, crushing. Yeah, that crushing. was... It's it's really hard because it's like obviously you wanna you wanna kinda point fingers and stuff, but they fell behind 
early and Fnatic are a team who are ruthless. If they get ahead, there's, there's, they do not give you that inch. Versus XL, there were windows that were left open. Versus Envision, there was nothing. They recognized that they were only strong in the mid game and they had to snowball from there. They didn't let them get mid game. Yusa, by the end of that game, had his two items while X Maddie was working on his fourth. Yeah, uh, pretty big disparity. Um, I think they, I think the, the Kane, I understand the concept, maybe it worked better in scrims, but it just, it didn't come together. I think having a bot lane without priority as well meant Bravado was free just to walk into the enemy jungle and kill him. And it's just impossible to play against Leona Sejuani when they're in your jungle just CCing you and killing you. Nolte was out of the game, and then it felt like everything else just sort of fell apart from there. They started opting out of contesting them, which made sense because they're behind, but the end result was... They, they never hit the power spikes because they were so far behind in gold. x could just chill and pick up like 17 plates, even though it's not possible. It just felt really doomed. Why did I think, I think about that? I had to <sighs> literally do the master mate. I was like, wait, no, it's 15. It's, it's clear that Envision came into this with a plan. Execution was off. It fell apart early. They had, a, they had a window they had to capitalize on, which is that mid game point. They had to play around the poke composition pretty well. They got stomped in the early game. And from there, the game just fell I just done. Like I, I, I don't like saying that because often every game I'm always like, here's the way they find it back. But against a team like Fnatic in particular, um, it's really felt doomed. It's I, I don't like to say you know like, you know it, it was easy, but that game was just it was unfortunately a bit too easy for Fnatic. They didn't give an o opening over to Envision to come back into it, and it just there was no way to come back. Unfortunately for Envision and for them, it's very much on like okay. They tried something, it didn't work. I don't think they can let this game get to them too hard. They were playing versus the second best team in the league. The, the current title holders of the UKFC Championship two times over, they know this is the hard right lineup to go up against. Two of these members have played with this team, so they know the, the resources that this organization have to them. So it, it, it's unfortunately, it just was a very hard game for Envision. I think for them, the best thing they can do is move on tomorrow's, onto tomorrow's game, where it's not easier for them. They have to take on XL tomorrow. So it's an, another really, really rough one for them. And while we're talking about that, let's have Are a look. Are they taking on XL? No, they're not. Um, it's Barrage taking on Fnatic tomorrow. Yeah, Sorry, I got it completely it. wrong. XL let's have a little look at tomorrow's matchups. We got Phelan taking on Demise, Enclave taking on BTXL. Barrage aren't, yeah, Barrage taking on Fnatic Rising. Thank you. I'm having a brain fart. And Vision will be taking on Eminem tomorrow. So that might be their chance to try and get themselves yeah. a win on the board. So I think game one should be pretty close. We've got to see if Demise have beaten Enclave. Can they do more against Phelan? Enclave against BTXL. Ouch. Uh, Barrage against Fnatic Rising. Uh, that could be a good one. Barrage showed they weren't good enough to be at XL, but can they take on this Fnatic Rising? It is clear that Fnatic Rising have adapted since their loss against XL, though. And then the game, last game is Envision against Eminem, which is much more manageable matchup and one they should be looking to win. If they want to make that fourth playoff spot, they need yeah. to be beating out every team that isn't Academies of Barrage and hopefully picking up some more wins on top of that uh, is the direction they want to go. So far, Envision, two and three. And they've only, they've lost to XL, they've lost to Barrage, they've lost to Fnatic. So if they win against everyone else, they will make that fourth spot, assuming there are no other upsets uh, to the top three teams. And it means they can come into the playoffs as an underdog. Obviously, the goal is to improve from here and challenge those top three. But in the first round, Robin, they haven't been able to beat any, any of them, but it's still the second round, Robin. But they need to be coming out ahead of teams like Eminem. Yeah, exactly. I think tomorrow's going to be a very exciting game. We've got some really interesting matchups today. It was... It was outside of that last one. We had some fantastic games. I'm glad to see we didn't get a Soraka. And you notice how much shorter the game was when there wasn't a Soraka. Yeah, yeah. Team fights actually just ended with deaths, which was yeah. People die. Yeah, uh, the health runs out. Yeah, exactly. So fantastic game there for Fnatic. They're able to keep themselves hot on the heels of uh, BTXO. And I feel like that matchup between those, that rematch in the second half of the round robin, is when we're going to see, you know, the grudge match of the UKLC and the fight for first. Yeah. Because at the moment, XL are eking ahead and Fnatic need to make sure they maintain 100% win rate outside of that one game. Any upset for... BTXL is big for Fnatic as well. It really yeah, gives them a nice I, I feel like on, on the second end of the round robin, I mean, BTXL, they've already faced Envision, they've already faced Barrage, they've already faced Fnatic. I feel like they should clean sweep this first round robin and finish at 7-0. Yeah. And then it's the second one where things get a little bit trickier. But we'll see whether that ends up playing out. They've got two more games uh, in this first round. Uh, next one's up against Enclave, which... 
definitely favours them. And then I'm not quite sure who the second one is, but we'll see that next week. We'll have to see that, but we are not done here for week three. We'll be back tomorrow at the same time, six o'clock in the UK, seven o'clock in Europe for more UKLC action. Until then, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.